Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. <laughs> the Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing stars Amy Arnell and Bob Matthews, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who went caught putting a bicycle pump in his Uncle Artie Stebbins' coat because he heard him say he had a date with a flat tire, calmly says, I'm a bad boy! Hey, come here, Costello. Oh, yeah, yeah, Costello, yeah, yeah. last yeah. week Mrs. Niles gave us a job working here in her apartment hotel. Now, uh, when are you going to start doing some work around here? Oh, I am working at it. What hey, do you mean? you see this tray? Yes. It's breakfast for a new tenant here in 202. Yeah. Here's your breakfast. <laughs> Costello! What's the idea of throwing that tray of food through the ransom? Mrs. Nile says when anybody rents a room, we throw in their breakfast. Uh, and... <laughs> no, 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 you don't. <laughs> Nothing of the kind. That's poor trays I threw in. Well, you'll stop it. Mrs. Niles meant that, uh, that uh, they have breakfast on her. They have breakfast on her? Yes, every morning. <laughs> Why, that's natural. Every morning, all the tenants have tomato juice, poached eggs, and syrup and pancakes on Mrs. Niles. Gee, by lunchtime, she must be a fine-looking mess. No. <laughs> Will you get busy and do some work around this hotel? Okay, but I'll get right to work. All right. Call for Hattie Lamar! Call for Hattie Lamar! No, 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 just a minute, Costello. Nobody wants Hattie Lamar. Don't pay any attention to him, folks. He got a yo-yo for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Costello. <laughs> Costello, the woman in 204 wanted some ice water. Did you take it up to her? No, we were all out of ice water, so I took up an onion. You took her an onion? Yeah, that will make her ice water. I... Call for new writer. Call for new writer. All right, Costello. That was a Christmas... <laughs> That was a pretty weak joke. I should have used two onions and made it stronger. I... Still calling for new writers. All right. <laughs> Costello, you're wrecking this hotel. What's the idea of putting five men in room 21? You know there's nothing in that room but a dresser. Yeah, that's what they're sleeping, in a dresser. Yeah. You mean five men are going to sleep in drawers? No, one guy has a nice shirt. I... <laughs> well, you shouldn't have put those five men in one room. Hey, yeah, but the what? place is crowded. You know, last night I had to take the door off the hinges, lay it across the chairs, and sleep on it. Uh, how was it? Well, it was a little drafty around the keyhole. I, I... <laughs> hey, it's really crowded over here in Hollywood, Abbott. You know that statue of Abraham Lincoln sitting in the chair across the street? Yes. I looked out there this morning. Lincoln was sharing the chair with Robert E. Lee. Uh, look, will you stop this silliness? Now you do need writers. Costello. <laughs> And clean up this lobby. Grab that vacuum and start cleaning that rug. Oh, I love vacuums. Well, go ahead. Costello, Costello. Yep, yep. Costello, look out, Costello, for Mrs. Niles' cat lying there on the rug. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what happened? The vacuum inhaled up the cat. <laughs> look out, who? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now what happened? I got the dog, too. <laughs> Don't stand there, reverse the motor, and blow that cat and dog out of the vacuum. No, don't point it at me. Point it out the window. Point it out the window? Out the window. I... Oh, you idiot. Hello, Costello speaking. This is the man in 310. Will you send me up an umbrella? <laughs> an umbrella? Yeah, it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> Costello. Costello, see what that man wants at the desk. How do you do, sir? Uh, I'd like to rent a room. Is this a modern hotel? Oh, yeah, we have all modern conveniences, including hot and cold running. Hot and cold running? Running what? I don't know. We haven't been able to catch any yet. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for warning me. Here's a lily for you. A lily? What will I do with it? You've got a pot for it, Shorty. <laughs> I'd like to invite that guy to sit on my barbed wire fence. Now, now look, uh, Costello, what's the idea of letting that man get out of here? With the terrible housing shortage, we shouldn't have an empty room. Look, look, uh, we'll see what kind of a hotel clerk you are. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Now, look, 
You, you stay behind the desk, and I'll pretend I'm looking for a room. Now, now here I come. Don't forget, I'm a customer. Yeah, customer. All right, now. <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> uh, good morning, clerk. Ah, good morning. Uh, could you give me a room? Why, certainly. Uh, could you give me a bath, too? No, you'll have to wash yourself. I... <laughs> there you go, getting fresh with a customer. No, you got fresh with me. What's the idea of asking me to give you a bath? I didn't ask you to give me a bath. I know how to wash myself. You do, huh? Certainly. Then tell me something, Abbott. Do you wash yourself with your right hand or your left hand? With my right hand. Now, ain't that funny? What? I use soap. Well, you stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Look, please, stop it, Lou. Get serious. I'm going to give you one more chance. Now, get it right this time. Now, here okay. I come. Okay. Uh, good morning, clerk. Uh, could you let me have a nice room? Yes, I can. And it has a lovely shower. Oh, I, I don't want a shower. I'd rather have an old-fashioned tub in my room. Bring her in. Your wife is welcome <laughs> in. Uh, yeah. Oh, get from behind that desk, you dope. I'll show you how a real hotel clerk conducts himself. Now, here. Now, you be a man looking for a room. Okay, now here I come. All right, you're the customer. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, would you like a room? Yes, we would. Wouldn't we, dear? I... Yes. Huh? We want the finest room in the hotel. Uh, wait a minute, Costello. What are you doing? I'm a married couple. I'm playing both parts. Uh... Dear, this is Mr. Abbott, the clerk. My, he's stupid looking, isn't he? Now, cut that out. Cut it out, Costello. I didn't say anything. She said it. Now, cut that out. You're not married. Young man. Are you insinuating that we are not married? Costello, will you cut it out? You know you're not married. What? Lewis, you mean that you have kept our marriage our secret? You are ashamed of me. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm going home to my mother. I hope I never see you again as long as I live. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come back here, Costello, you dummy. What about the room? Uh, we won't need it now. My wife just left me. Here's what happened. Three leading independent research organizations put a direct question to 113,000 doctors. Physicians, surgeons, neurologists, nose and throat specialists, Park Avenue doctors, and country practitioners. Every type of doctor everywhere. The question was... Which cigarette do you yourself smoke, Doctor? The brand most named was Camel. And why not check Camel's cool throat welcome mildness and rich, full flavor on your own T-Zone? That's tea for taste and tea for throat. Your own T-Zone may tell you why this is so. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camel's than any other cigarette. <laughs> Uh, yes, Mrs. Niles. Mr. Rabbit, I gave you and Costello a room in this apartment hotel on condition that you two do some work around this place. Oh, oh we are working, Mrs. Niles. In fact, Costello's up on the seventh floor washing the windows. <laughs> Costello, what are you doing? Hey, I was up on the seventh floor standing on a window ledge washing the windows. Well, what happened? I stepped back to admire my work. <laughs> I'll give you exactly one hour to get this lobby cleaned up. Oh, I wish I could stay here and keep an eye on you. But I have to go to the beauty parlor to have my hair curled. Well, if you want to stay here, I'll take your hair over for you. <laughs> That's enough, Costello. Get to work. Costello, I want you to stop insulting Mrs. Niles. You understand? Yes, sir. Uh, hey, hey, look, Costello. Bessie May Mucho just drove up in front. See if you can help her out. Hello, Miss Mucho. Can I help you with your things? Oh, thank you. I'm very weary. I was over to the Hollywood Country Club playing a game of golf. <laughs> Did you say golf? Oh, uh, sure, Abby, you know what golf is. That's where you rock around with a cootie and a big book of clues. <laughs> How was your game today, Miss uh, Mucho? Well, I did excellent with my brothy, but I just couldn't handle my marshy. How did you do with your pooter? <laughs> I must get up to my boudoir and take my afternoon nap. Yes, you do look a little sloopy. <laughs> well, adios and a much as gracias to you. And your father's mustache to you, too. <laughs> Hello, room service. Hello, clerk. This is the man at 404. I'd like to leave a 6 o'clock call. Well, all right, a 6 o'clock call. Well, then call me twice at 3. <laughs> Call him up three times at two. I'll get him mixed up. Hey, on your toes, Costello. Here comes a couple. Okay. Take, take their luggage. Right. Uh-huh. 
How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Uh, we'd like to get a room. We're uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Smith. Ah, I'm glad of that. We've been having an awful lot of Joneses lately. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. You see, we're newlyweds, aren't we, Rodney? Yes, Genevieve. <laughs> oh, I'm simply crazy about you, Rodney. I love to run my fingers through your curly hair. Curly hair? It must be on his chest. <laughs> uh, look, clerk. Uh, clerk. <laughs> Please, clerk, the people in the lobby are laughing. Clerk, we'd like to have a roomsy woomsy for me and my ipy wifey. <laughs> Wouldn't we, lovey dovey? Yesy wessy, hubby wubby. Well, <laughs> sign your namesy wamesy on the bookie wookie. <laughs> well, yeah. Never mind, Costello. Show Mr. and Mrs. Smith uh, to room 200. Yes, bellboy, I'll take my suitcase and you grab my wife's trunk. Right. All right, hurry up, Costello. See that Mr. and Mrs. Smith are comfortable and report back to the desk right away. Follow me. Here is your room. Thank you, young man. Here's a dime for your trouble. Good day. Good day. Thank you. Ah, uh, Genevieve. Ah, uh, Rodney. Here we are, alone together. Well? Would you like a big pitcher of ice water? No. Good day. Good day. Ah, Genevieve. Oh, Rodney. At last we're alone. All day I've been waiting for just one little kiss. Well, what is it now? How about a small pitch of ice water? <laughs> no, no. Good day. Good day. <laughs> Genevieve. Oh, Rodney. I think he's gone now. Yes, at last we're alone together. You'll have to talk a little louder. I can't hear you. <laughs> All right, all right, punk. Out you go. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who are you shoving? I'm shoving you. I'm shoving you. Okay, you never does any harm to us. <laughs> now, get out and stay out. Oh, you're so masterful, Robin. <coughs> Thank heavens he's gone. Oh, Genevieve, come here to me. <laughs> all day I've waited to hold you in my arms and tell you how lovely you are. Oh, my own little bride. Oh, Rodney, you're the most wonderful man I've ever met. You're my own <laughs> darling, darling husband. Well, what is it? I have a telegram for you. Take it back to the lobby, you dope. I'll get it later. Yes, sir. If that idiot knocks on this door again, so help me, I'll open the door and tear him to pieces. Oh, the silly boy's gone. I hope he is, dear. You fat-headed idiot! You're driving me to destruction! What in heaven's name do you want now? I just want to tell you that the telegram wasn't for you! Ah! Tomorrow is February 15th, and we salute the birth date of a great man, a great humanitarian, and a great doctor, Silas Weir Mitchell. His work in nerve symptomatology, therapy, and nerve surgery is known to practically every man of medicine. So this tribute to him and to the men who have followed him, hewing further, ever further, into the wilderness of the unknown paths of knowledge Dr. Mitchell first blazed. The makers of camels cannot help but be proud that a recent nationwide survey of 113,000 doctors by three leading research organizations showed that more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Which cigarette do you yourself smoke, doctor, was the question asked. The brand most named was Camel. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Carl Hoff and the Camel Orchestra joined lovely Amy Arnell with a hit from the Bells of St. Mary. Aren't you glad you're you? Every time you're near a rose, aren't you glad you've got a nose? And if the dawn is fresh with dew, aren't you glad you're you? When a meadow lark appears, aren't you glad you've got two ears? And if your heart is singing too, aren't you glad you're you? You can see a summer sky, a touch of friendly hands, or taste an apple pie. 
Heart of a grandma, but ain't life grand. And when you wake up each morn, aren't you glad that you were born? Think what you got the whole day through. Aren't you glad you you? But it like friend And when you wake up each morn Aren't you glad that you were born Think what you got the whole day through Aren't you glad you you Uh, who is it? Mrs. Niles, it's time to get up now. Get down to the lobby and get to work. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, come on, Costello. Get up and take your shower. I'm not going to take any more showers. I don't like that stall shower. What's the matter with that stall shower? You just opened the door once. Hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's that horse doing in the uh, bathroom? It must be a plug for the bathtub. I... <laughs> Look, let's get down. <laughs> let's get down to the desk in the lobby and get to work. Come on. Hey, Abbott, what? I wish we didn't have to work today. I wish it was summer and I was going down to the beach. Remember when I took Ruby Pool Cue down to the beach last summer? Yeah. What fun I had burying her in the sand. Yeah. Gee, I'd like to go down there again this summer. What for? It's time to dig her up. I... <laughs> Hey, look, Costello, sir, old friend Scotty Brown. Uh, would you like a room, Scotty? No, I just came over to use your shower bath. Oh, that would be 50 cents for a bath towel. Uh, I don't need a towel, laddie. I brought along a box of carpet tacks. Carpet tacks? <laughs> Aye. I spread them on the floor and they make me jump up and down and it dries me off every time. <laughs> well, then I'll have to charge you a nickel for a bar of soap. Oh, I won't need that either, buddy. I had a fight with my wife and worked myself into a lather. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, you should have charged him for the water. Ah, uh, he wouldn't use that either. He's got water underneath. <laughs> hey, that's the switchboard, Costello. Answer it. Okay. Hello, room service. Oh, Costello, this is Mrs. Niles. Get up to my room right away. Help! Help! What's the matter, Mrs. Niles? There's a big swarm of bees in my room. A swarm of bees? Don't move, Mrs. Niles. A bee will never sting you if you stand still. Ow! Well, hardly ever. <laughs> What about the bees? Huh? What about the bees? There's a swarm of bees in Mrs. Niles' room. Good heavens. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. The bees will just have to defend themselves. <laughs> are you idiot? Those bees will sing her to death. Come on. We've got to get up there. Oh, heavens. It's about time you two got here. Knock on all the doors and tell the guests the place is full of bees. Okay, Mrs. Niles. What do you want? There's bees in Mrs. Niles' room. So what? I've got beetles and bats in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Ray Milan. <laughs> a young man. A young man. Uh, do you know what to do for a bee sting? No, I don't. Well, first you pull the stinger out, then you wash with antiseptic, spread some mud on the sting, oh, wrap it in gauze, lie oh, down, minute, keep quiet. Wait a minute. You ask me. I ask you what? What do you do for a bee sting? Well, first you pull out the stinger, wash it <laughs> no, with antiseptic, no, spread some mud on the sting. Oh, my head. Oh, my head. Oh, it's my oh. husband, Kenneth. Oh, look at me. The bees put all those bumps on my head. Now, don't worry, Mr. Niles. Now you won't have to wear your high heels. You're two inches taller. <laughs> Costello, put your ear to the door and see if the bees are still in Mrs. Niles' room. Uh, see if you can hear them buzzing. Yes, Abbott. Go ahead. I can hear a buzzing. Then the bees uh, must be in there yet. I wouldn't be too sure about that. But you heard the buzzing, didn't you? Yeah, but I hear that all the time. I... <laughs> It's Bessie. It's Bessie Mae Mucho. Miss Mucho, uh, are the bees in your room, too? Yes. They flew in the window of my boudoir while I was putting on my stokings. Stokings? <laughs> yes, Rabbit. Stokings. That's those knee-loon things the girls wear on their logs. A leaf. Leaf. <laughs> Just look where one of those naughty bees stung me on my knee. Ah, those bees sure hang around some classy joints. Yeah, well... <laughs> 
Well, don't stay in there, Costello. Get in that room and chase the bees out. Well, why don't you go in, Abbott? Uh, well, I, I'm allergic to bees. I, I can't even stand to, uh, to eat bees, honey. Nobody asked you to eat bees, darling. And... <laughs> look, you idiot. Who's going in there and chase those bees out? Costello, all you have to do is go in there and lure the queen bee out the window, and the rest of them will follow. Yeah, but I don't know a queen bee from any other bee. You don't? <laughs> no, why should I? That's something that would only interest another bee. <laughs> Costello, are you going to act... Are you going to act like a coward in front of all these people? I'll get in that room and chase the bees out. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, boy! Look at all the bees in here! You can hardly count them all! There's two, four, eight, nine, ten, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight! That was B-29. <laughs> Keep that. Keep that. Keep that. <laughs> oh, they're coming at me! Let me out! Let me out! Oh, oh, gee, they almost got me. Well, was it bad in there, Costello? Bad? I saw a couple of mice under the bed digging foxholes. <laughs> Costella, Costella, quick, get that bee off me. Here Grab goes. something and swat it. Here goes. Oh, <laughs> not with that lamp, you idiot. Oh, there she is on the great Costella. Swat it with this newspaper. Okay, come here, little queenie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Take that. <laughs> you didn't even touch me. <laughs> The says I didn't even touch him. <laughs> the bee said that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who ever heard of a bee, a talking bee? Well, you've heard of a spelling bee. I... <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's the queen bee. She's lying on that chair. I'll get her this time. Ow! Ooh, ow! Uh, what are you yelling for? I'm, I'm sitting on a bee. She's stinging me. Well, <laughs> if she's stinging you, why'd you get up? I'm hurting her as much as she's hurting me. <laughs> Hey, what's, what's that? Good night. Here comes the rest of the bees back through the window. They're coming back to the queen. Let's get out of here. Everybody run for the swimming pool. Come on, everybody. We've got to dive into the pool. It's our only chance. Dive in. What, what, what happened? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I drained out all the water in the pool this morning. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight, we hail the men of the 86th. Black Hawk Division, heroes of Dachau, Ingolstadt, and southern Germany. Since the beginning of the war, we have sent over 150 million free cigarettes to our fighting men overseas. But now, with demobilization in progress, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. Tonight, the camels go to United States Naval Hospital, Mare Island, California, U.S. Army Camp Edwards Convalescent Hospital, Massachusetts, U.S. Marine Hospital, Mobile, Alabama, and Veterans Hospital, Waukesha, Wisconsin, in your honor, men of the 86th Black Hawk Division. Camel <laughs> broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Well, we had we had fun with the bees tonight, didn't we, uh, Lou? Huh? Yes, Abbott, and the audience was swell too. You know, folks, children under fourteen years of age are not allowed at these broadcasts. So I'm going to give everybody here a record of our show so that they can take it home and play it for the kids. No, no, not I... that! You want to play to my kids? No! <laughs> What are you running for? 
Are you afraid I'll outsmart you again? Listen, Fatso, I can stick you every time. Tell me, what's the difference between a jeweler, a prison guard, and a washboard? I don't know. What is the difference between a jeweler, a prison guard, and a washboard? A jeweler sells watches. A prison guard watches sells. Now, what's the washboard for? That's for a big tub like you are. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, Good night. everybody. Good night. Good night. Tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your T-Zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. C-A-M-E-L-S. Pipe smokers, what's the world's most popular pipe tobacco? Prince Albert, of course. Prince Albert for choice, mellow, flavorful tobacco... Crimp cut for slow, cool burning and specially treated to take out tongue bite and sting. Switch to Prince Albert for more smoking pleasure. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, coast to coast on NBC. Be sure to listen to this very same time next week for the Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.